Hi, I'm Mr. Rosengrant, and I am here with Captain Ben Wilson, a pilot for United Airlines. And we also have a student with us here named Cole, who is interested in becoming a pilot. So, uh, Captain Wilson, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So we wanted to start off by just asking you what led you to wanting to become a pilot and what was your journey to uh, leading you to that career? I'm, I'm one of the few exceptions. I actually knew what I wanted to do when I was five years old. Uh, my first flight ever uh, was a flight from Raleigh, North Carolina to Chicago. Uh, I was going out west to visit family and it was actually on a United Airlines 737. I was five years old, flight attendant brings me down and uh, she takes me to the cockpit and I'm looking at this room with all these buttons and switches and I just thought it was amazing. And uh, the captain looks down at me, hey, how you doing? And I'm just looking, just absolutely amazed at, at, this, at this plane. And he says, that's not a good seat, sit here. Picks me up, sits me in his seat. And you know, my arms are sticking out, my feet are sticking out. I knew at that moment what I wanted to do and who I wanted to fly for. And so it, it was always something that I wanted to do. Now, a lot of people don't, necessarily know what they want to do when they're uh, looking at their career. Uh, I have quite a few examples of, of guys that I've flown with. They, you know, started getting their degrees. I, there's one specifically that I was thinking about that he was actually a police officer before he became a pilot. So he went and he got his law enforcement uh, background and got his uh, criminal justice degree and everything. He, he was a police officer for years and he realized uh, this isn't what I want to do. And so he said, what, what's something fun that I could do? He got into flying and he started flying, got his ratings and became an airline pilot. Um, and that's one of the great things about uh, the aviation industry. They don't care what degree you have as long as you have a degree. I mean, it could be a degree in underwater basket weaving. And as long as you have a degree, they don't care. Um, now, me specifically, I knew what I wanted to do. So I got my degree in aeronautical science, and uh, which is the main you know, flying degree that you can get. Uh, but you can, it can be in anything. Um, there's actually a few uh, pilots that I know that are lawyers on the side. So they got their law degree, became lawyers, and then they started flying. And so when they're not flying, they're a lawyer. And so then they're actually making quite a bit of money on both sides, the flying and, the, and being a lawyer and things like that. So um, that's what led me into it, though, was, was my, my five-year-old experience. I would fly every summer to go out and visit my dad, my family. Um, and I just always loved it. And so what I did is when I was in high school, I talked to um, some of my teachers and one of my teachers was actually my chemistry teacher, um, knew about a school named Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. And she had all these documents and all, this, all these papers about the school and everything. And so she let me have those. And um, I knew at that moment where I wanted to go to school. Now, the nice thing about aviation is like I said before, you can get a degree in anything. Um, Embry-Riddle is a very expensive school. And I wish I would have recognized that I could have ended up going to Penn State or, you know, anywhere and done it for a lot cheaper. But, you know, Embry-Riddle has its name behind it, especially in aviation. And so uh, that's the school that I went to. And they're actually very good at uh, helping uh, individuals who want to know how to fly, learn how to fly, things like that, and getting them into where they need to be in order to follow their career path. Um, and so, you know, I have a lot of buddies of mine specifically at United that uh, went to Embry-Riddle and it's, you know, because it has the name backing, but uh, there are other aviation schools. Um, uh, Purdue is actually a big aviation school. Um, University of North Dakota, they also have a great aviation degree. Um, there are a, a lot of other schools around that have those aviation degrees that are a lot cheaper and things like that. Penn State actually does have some um, aviation programs uh, associated with them as well. So it really doesn't matter where you, where you go. Um, now, again, I knew I wanted to go to Embry-Riddle, but before I did that, I actually started my flying in Reading, Pennsylvania. I just found a local airport, started my flying, and they had a program through uh, Reading Area Community College. And so they actually had an aviation degree. Um, and so I got my associate's degree at Reading Area Community College and did all my flying, got my two-year degree, and then I transferred to Embry-Riddle and finished my four-year degree, started flight instructing for, for every riddle. And so there's so many different ways that you can do it. Um, I, I finished my degree at every riddle, flight instructed for them for about four and a half years until I got hired by the regional airlines. Um, my specific airline was Republic Airways uh, and I was based out of Philadelphia. And then um, I flew with them for five years before I got hired by United Airlines. Um, yeah, you were probably gonna ask this, but uh, kind of leading towards this, there's so many different ways, so many different paths that you can take to become a pilot. 
Um, you know, there's a buddy of mine that uh, his dad was actually the uh, chief pilot of Quest Diagnostics. You may have heard of them before. They, they actually do a lot of medical laboratory testing and things like that. Well, depending on where you get your test done, they have to fly, you know, those samples to the different uh, labs and everything like that. And so they had a big aviation department. Um, and uh, I actually worked, it's called line service, where you're fueling planes, cleaning planes, uh, things like that. Um, I worked for them. And this buddy of mine was also working with me. And his dad actually bought him a small airplane. You know, just a cheap, it was like a 1960s Cessna. So it, it maybe cost like twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, you know, the same amount as a car. And my buddy got all his ratings in that little airplane. And then, you know, he was still working on, on his degree, going to the same school I was going, going to Reading. And um, after he was done all his ratings, he sold the airplane, got all his money back and everything like that. So he didn't have to worry about renting the airplane and things like that. So he saved quite a bit of money by doing it that way. So can you tell us what a pilot does? I know you fly planes, but there's probably a lot of other parts to the job that we're unaware of. So what is kind of the typical day in the life of a pilot? You're actually exactly right. That's pretty much what we do. Um, you know, I, I have a flight tomorrow, so I'll, I'll kind of go through um, basically what my day is going to be like tomorrow. Uh, I, I'm going to have to get up a little bit early. I'm going to have to get up at 3.15 because my flight uh, leaves at like 6.15. But, uh, you know, I'm going to get up, you know, get ready. I have all my stuff ready for me. Um, we, we actually have iPads, company issued iPads that, that has all our charts on it and, and things like that. Um, so I'll have my flight bag with my iPad in it. I grab my suitcase, head to the airport. I'm going to meet up with, with, uh, my first officer. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to go over our, our iPads, look at our flight plan and say, okay, this is where we're going to go. Are there any issues that we're worried about? Weather? Um, are there any issues uh, with the airport? Is a runway closed? Anything like that? We're going to go over that. I'm going to talk to my, call my dispatcher and uh, cause they're the ones that do all the flight planning and, and all the extra things that are going on. Um, and, you know, talk to him, see if there's any issues, if there's any issues with the airplane that we need to be aware of. Is, is the bathroom not working? Is there, you know, it's, uh, things like that. Um, talk to him. And that, that usually happens about an hour before the flight. Head down to the airplane. We check the airplane out. We set up everything. We set up our, our flight computers. We, we set up everything that we need to do. Flip a few switches. Say our hellos to the passengers. Talk to, talk to anybody else we may need to talk to. Push back and do the flight. And, um, and then uh, we're heading to San Francisco tomorrow. Uh, as soon as we get to San Francisco, we're done. We get off the airplane, we get in the van, we go to the hotel, and I have 22 hours in San Francisco that I get to, you know, go tour around and, and things like that. Um, that's actually one of the amazing things about, about flying is when you're done, you're done. You get to go do whatever you want. Um, I've flown internationally. Um, pretty much almost my entire career with, with United. I'm, I became a captain on the 737. So uh, I'm flying domestically right now, uh, mainly in the United States, Mexico, Canada, places like that. Um, but um, most of my flying has been done internationally. So, uh, you know, we'd fly to, my favorite place to fly is London. Uh, we fly to London, we'd have 36 hours in London. So we get to London, get to do whatever you want. I'm a big World War II buff. And so, you know, I go get to see all the World War II sites and, and museums and, and things like that. Um, some other places we've gone, uh, Narita, Japan, Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong is a great place to go. And I'd never been there before. And so, you know, my first time going to Hong Kong, of course, I get out and start touring around and, and things like that. And um, that's that's one of the huge benefits of, of flying is when you get there, now you get to tour around. You get to visit all these places that not a lot of people get a chance to go to. Um, and then, you know, you go to sleep, you get up. You turn around, you do it the next day, you go to wherever you're going and, uh, and things like that. When you're international, normally it's just one leg over and then one leg back. Uh, when you're flying domestically, you may have a, a few legs a day. Uh, like uh, Saturday, I'll be flying from San Francisco to Houston and then Houston back to Dulles. Uh, so it really depends on the day, but that's, that's pretty much all you have to do. Now, in the background, uh, of course, there's a lot of training that goes on. Um, every three months, I have to do some online training, but it's all online, no big deal. Um, you know, you listen to a, a few of the things, either they're talking about your airplane or some safety issues, uh, things like that. Um, every nine months, I have to go out to Denver, that's our training center, and uh, jump in a simulator. And we do a lot of, of practicing. We practice our uh, engine out procedures, uh, any emergencies that, that may uh, occur. Um, and basically, we practice all of those things in a simulator, things we 
that it's, it's a lot cheaper to do it in a simulator than it is in the actual airplane. Um, although that's what they used to do. They used to jump in an airplane and, and practice all that stuff. But uh, now we have the simulators, which are absolutely amazing. It's, it's exactly like flying an airplane. You're doing training and things like that. But when you're done all that stuff and you're done your flight, you're home. And um, it, it's, it really is an amazing thing. It's, um, you know, when I was flying internationally, you may fly maybe two or three trips a month. Uh, and usually my trips were usually about three days. So one leg over, 36 hours in London, one leg back, and you're done for like four days. Um, also depends on the airplane you're on. When I was on the 777, um, I may only fly one or two trips a month. So, you know, I'd fly one the first week of the month, three days, and then I was home for two weeks. And then, you know, go fly another trip and things like that. So you're only gone uh, away from home for six days out of the month, um, which, which is absolutely amazing. And all the rest of the time, you're getting paid to sit at home. Um, it, it's, it's an absolutely amazing job. But when you do, um, when you're flying, depending on which plane you're flying, like right now I'm flying on the 737. So uh, you do a lot more domestic flights. So I am flying a lot more. I'm usually flying about three or four trips a month, but I'm still home 13, 14 days out of the month. Um, but when you're junior, you're not going to be home for the holidays. That's, that's kind of the downside is, uh, you know, Christmas, you're flying. Um, uh, Thanksgiving, yeah, you're flying. Things like that. But, you know, you kind of work around that you know, with, with the kids. Um, if I knew I was going to fly on Christmas, we'd have Christmas early, you know, a few days early. And it felt just like Christmas. I remember my kids saying, wow, this feels, it doesn't feel like it's not Christmas day and, uh, and things like that. So you find ways to work around it and things like that. But, the, you know, that's, that's the basics of, of the flying. When you're flying, you're flying. When you're done, you're done. You said uh, the best part of the job would be like you just visiting all these places and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of tied. Because I love the flying. I absolutely love the flying. Um, I mean, flying an airplane that is weighing 800,000 pounds and all of a sudden you take off and you're, you're taking off out of Hong Kong, or you're taking off out of Kauai or, you know, things like that. And when, you, when, when you're flying this airplane, it, it's just an amazing feeling to know not only are you flying this massive plane, I'm going to have to send you a picture and uh, maybe you can show this um, the engines of the 777 are so big that you can stand inside of, of the engine inlets. And so when you think about this massive airplane, you've got 300 passengers in the back. It's just amazing to see what you're doing. So that's, for me, that's the best part is, is you know, just flying this amazing airplane to all these amazing different places and things like that. But tied for it is, yeah, getting to tour all these amazing places uh, that you've heard about but never had a chance to visit. And all of a sudden you're there. And, and you get to go see those things. So I'd, I'd probably say those two are tied for, for the best things in, in flying. Now, what would you say is the most challenging part of um, being a pilot? It would have to be the schedules. Um, you know, when you first are starting to, to work out um, or work through your career and everything, you are junior and it's all seniority based. So the more senior people are going to get the better trips and, and things like that. So when you're junior, yeah, you're, you're going to be working a lot of weekends, a lot of holidays and things like that. But as you start working through it, um and working through the seniority that's when it starts to get better what type of requirements do you need to be able to fly um it, pretty much as long as you're healthy you got you, you know I, I maybe i shouldn't say this but i'm going to say it anyway you don't even necessarily have to have good vision anymore um <laughs> uh, you know i've i've flown with guys you know they jump in the airplane like, all right let me get out my glasses you know they dig out they put their glasses <laughs> on and, and things like that you used to have to have uh, 20 20 vision in order to fly uh, but now it can be corrected you know, I've got guys, I can't tell you how many guys that I fly with that wear contacts or they wear glasses, they had LASIK surgery and things like that. Um, but basically healthy and, you know, a good, uh, good hand eye coordination is, is really good. Um, I always kind of joke around with people about, about that, you know, people growing up now play video games and stuff like that. You have to have good hand eye coordination to play your video games. And, uh, you know, that, that really helps. It really helps. Uh, I played a lot of flight simulator when I was growing up and, you know, that helped with the hand eye coordination. Um, you know, playing sports, uh, you have to have good hand-eye coordination. You're playing basketball, baseball, whatever it is. Um, so that, that's a big thing, but, um, you know, staying healthy, that's a big key in flying because, um, uh, especially when you start flying internationally, you're on the plane for 16 hours. And so, you know, you're sitting on the airplane and you don't get to get up much. So, you know, staying healthy and staying active when you're not in the airplane is, is a big key. So I'd say, um, those are, those are big, um, a good study and work ethic. Um, because, you know, when you're studying an airplane, learning an airplane, it's a lot to learn. 
it's a lot to learn. So being able to recognize, all right, I need to sit down, focus, start to memorize some of these limitations that this airplane has, uh, you know, things like that. So, you know, memorization is, is key. And, you know, you do that every time you take a test, you, you start memorizing all these facts and everything that you need to know for the test. That's, that's a big key. Um, so keeping your, your uh, mental skills up is big. So yeah, staying healthy, memorization and, and mental skills um, are, are really big keys in, in that. Can you talk a little bit about um, the military? Some people kind of go in that route and other people might just go kind of the civilian route. Can you kind of talk a little bit about the difference between the two for those students that might be thinking about maybe going in military or those that might want to uh, go a different route? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I went the civilian route. I could have gone into the military, but I decided, you know, I'm going to go the civilian route. And um, it's, it's about 50, 50, you know, 50% of guys go civilian, 50% go military. Um, and yeah, so I, I got my degree, started flight instructing, and then got on with the uh, regional airlines and then eventually got hired um, with the uh, uh, major airlines. Um, the, there's pros and cons to both sides. Military has outstanding training programs. They are, they are the best at, at training people and helping you learn how to fly and, and things like that. The downside to that is a big commitment. Uh, military, you have a 10-year commitment. And so if you're, done, if you're done, you're flying, you're like, okay, I'm done. I'm ready to go fly for the airlines. And it's only been five years. You got five more years to go and that you got to do that. Um, and that, that's actually something that almost happened to me. Um, I was flight instructing and I was done flight instructing. I was ready to, to go fly for the airlines. And that was 2008. And so that was the recession. And at that point, all the airlines weren't hiring. And I was, I was so done flying, uh, flight instructing. I was ready to move on. And so I went to um, the Air Force, a recruiter. And I, I said, you know, I, I think I, I, I want to do this. And so we start talking. He goes, oh, wow. Okay, let's see. You've got a four-year degree. Um, you have a bunch of flying already. You have about 1,500 hours. This is, this is great. You're going to go in as an officer. Uh, and, oh, okay, this, well, let, let's, let's do this. And the last question he asked, he said, oh, by the way, how old are you? He said, I'm 28. He goes, oh, you're getting a desk job. It's like, what? He goes, yeah, you're, you're too old to, to go through the flight training program. I said, well, make me a flight instructor. I don't care. And he, no, no, you're getting a desk job. I said, well, all right, well, thank you for your time. He goes, wait, wait, wait. You don't want to enlist? I said, no, not if you're not going to let me fly. And uh, so he goes, oh, okay. Well, I'm really glad I didn't do that because it would have been a 10-year commitment. And it was just a few years after that that I got hired by United Airlines. So um, having that 10-year commitment, you know, can be a, a little bit of a damper. But um, again, great training programs. You get great experience going through the military. Uh, it really depends on what you want to do. So, um, you know, kind of, I'm glad you're talking to me as someone that went through the civilian route, but I'd say, Talk to some military guys too. Um, get a, get the opportunity to get as much information as you can. Uh, I'm going to send a, a website um, to Mr. Rosengrant about uh, some of the websites that I used when I was getting into my career. Uh, one of them is uh, AirlinePilotCentral.com. Uh, they have a bunch of different air uh, companies that you can research. They show all the information, pay scale, what airplanes they fly, where they fly, bases they have. Uh, and it's not just airlines, you know, they have cargo, they have corporate, they have things like that, but they also have some forums that you can go in and you can actually ask questions and talk to people and everything like that. So if you can't find somebody in the military to talk to one-on-one, -on -one, I guarantee you, you're going to be able to find somebody on those forums. You can talk to and say, okay, why did you choose the military route? What made you want to get into this? And, you know, a lot of them will say, oh, I want to fly the fighter jets or I want to fly those massive cargo planes, you know, things like that. So uh, I'm going to send you those, those links and everything like that. Um, and that's another way that you can you can get in there and kind of talk to people and see why did they choose this versus this. Um, one question that you did ask uh, about um, the requirements, going back to that. Yeah, they only require a four-year degree. A lot of companies right now are only saying that it's recommended. So you may not even need a four-year degree at some point. If you only had a two-year degree, you may still be able to get into the airlines. Now, it's competitive. So having the four-year degree, that's, that's usually the best route to go. But um, yeah, you need right now a four-year degree. And usually it takes about four years of flying to get all the, the certificates that you need. So we, we like to joke around that it's almost the same, you know, educational requirements as a doctor, but we can just get all our training done a lot faster because you can fly while you're getting your degree. Whereas a doctor, you have to do all eight years concurrently and stuff like that. We can fly while we're getting our, our degree. Uh, and that's what I did. So, you know, while I was getting my two-year degree, I was getting all my ratings. And then when I was finishing my bachelor's degree, I was still, you know, getting my flight instructor degree, flight instructing, you know, things like that. Um, so, but those are the main educational degrees as well. So you need your certificates, your flight certificates, 
And those flight certificates are first, you get your private pilot's license, then your instrument rating, which means you can fly in the clouds. Um, then your commercial, which means now you can get paid for flying. And then, you know, most people get their flight instructor certificate, uh, but you also need your multi-engine uh, certificate, which is um, flying a plane with multiple engines. So once you get your multi-engine certificate, you can fly something that has two engines, or you can go fly the 747 that has four engines. And, you know, you only need that one multi-engine certificate to fly it. Um, but then in order to get into um, the airlines, you have to have what's called an ATP, Airline Transport Pilot Certificate which is basically, that's, that's kind of like the PhD of, of flying. So that's, that's the pinnacle, and that's what, that's what you need. Um, anytime you fly for the, the major airlines, you have to have your ATP. Uh, so, but those, those are the main educational requirements that you need as well. So um, is it easy to get a job as a pilot? Right now it is. It really is. Um, you know, especially after COVID, you know, everybody wants to get out and, and go places. So, you know, the planes are packed, and we need pilots to fly those airplanes. Um, the aviation industry is very cyclical, it's up and down. Um, most most guys will kind of joke around and say, "Well, you have to you get hired, but then you have to get your furlough out of the way as well." So most most of us have been furloughed at one point or another in our career. Um, I was furloughed for two years um, when I was uh, at Republic, um, and it's just because it's so cyclical. We almost had to furlough a bunch of guys uh, during COVID because nobody was flying. Um, but right now, we're we're definitely on the upward swing. You know, they're hiring quite a bit of pilots right now. Um, and so it's, it's really easy to get a job and you don't have to, you know, go the route I went with flight instructing. You can go fly for a cargo company. Uh, I had a bunch of buddies that, excuse me, that did that, um, you know, to build up your hours that you need to get on with the, either the regional airlines or the, the major airlines, things like that. So, uh, but yeah, right now we're hurting for pilots. We need pilots. Um, uh, another link, uh, if you can remind me to, to send to you, um, uh, that we have a program with United, it's called the Aviate program. And it's actually starting for guys your age. You sign up for the Aviate program. Basically what happens is they pay for you to get your, I believe it's your private and your instrument ratings. Um, and they start you in the program, basically getting you to the point where you get hired by United Airlines. How would I sign up for that program? It's it's the website. It's it's Aviate, actually, let me, let me pull this up right now. So that, that way you have it. Um, I believe it's uh, aviateunited.com. Let me just double check to make sure. But uh, yeah, um, and you get on that uh, website. And yeah, we actually have, yeah, it's unitedaviate.com. And we actually have, uh, we bought a flight school. So United bought a flight school. Uh, we train everybody in that flight school. You don't have to go to that flight school. Flight school is in Phoenix. Um, but um, basically what you do, you get in, you get accepted to the program and you've already signed a commitment. You've done your interviews and everything like that. So you've already interviewed with United. You don't even need to interview. So basically what happens is you get all your training, you get all your ratings, you continue to get a four-year degree, whatever. Most of the guys are doing it in the aviation uh, realm of degrees, but you get your aviation degree and then you're automatically hired into a regional airline, whether it be Air Wisconsin or SkyWest, you know, one of those regionals. And then once you put your time in there at SkyWest, you basically flow through to United. And so basically it's a one-stop shop. And so it's uh, unitedaviate.com is, is the website and they have all the information on there for you. Um, we actually just had our first Aviate class graduate um, as pilots for United just uh, a month or two ago. So this is a brand new program that, that we have. And there are a lot of other programs. A lot of other airlines are starting to do these programs and everything, um, you know, and it's Delta, but you know, there are competitors, so I, I'm not a fan, but, Delta has their own program. Um, I think JetBlue has a program similar to that. Uh, I think you, uh, American is also doing another program, but United's the best, so just, just stick with United. But uh, honestly, yeah, we have our own flight school. Not all the other airlines don't have their own flight schools and things like that. So that, that's something that I would highly recommend looking into. So that kind of, I had another question, but would what you said kind of reiterated it. So my question was going to be, um, would it be cheaper to like just go to a flight school? Or would it be cheaper? Because I wanted to go Purdue and you can get all your flight stuff through Purdue because they have an airport. They have a phenomenal, like that is the number one college I'm looking at right now. So yep. would it be cheaper to just get your uh, flight pilots, your private pilot's license, like right before you go to college? Like I could get it right now if I wanted to, or would I go to a college? And It's probably going to be more expensive if you do it through the college. Um, like I said, you know, my buddy of mine that, that bought his own airplane, he did it a lot cheaper because, you know, they bought this airplane, used it as they needed to. 
and then they sold it. So they got all that money back. So basically he got all of his ratings for about a quarter of the cost of what it would have cost doing it through the university. Um, when I was at, at we call it riddle. Sorry, I should say Embry Riddle. Um, I would be teaching guys that they come up to me and they're like, "Then I'm not coming back next semester." Said, Why not? What, what's what's going on? I can't afford it. And I said, "I've I've already spent you know $150,000 on this, and my parents aren't going to pay for it anymore. So I've got to go, you know, um, you know, to a different. I had I actually had a buddy that transferred uh, up to uh, UND, University of North Dakota, because Embry Riddle was so expensive and things like that. And the main reason is because you know they know they have you." So they can charge a lot more uh, when you're getting your ratings at, at, the, at the school than if you did it on the outside. Um, so, you know, my personal opinion, I think it would be cheaper to, to find a little school, uh, flight school and everything, and do it that route. You know, because what I did is when I went through Reading Area Community College, all of my credits transferred to Embry-Riddle. So I didn't have to do any extra flying or extra classes. If you're going to do that, though, what you want to make sure that you have is that the flight school that you're going to is a part 141 school. Um, that is the specific training requirements that um, those major universities have. They are part 141 training schools. And it's because of the specific way that they train that they're certified by the FAA to train in that environment. There are some schools that you'll, you'll, you'll hear it's called part 91. Uh, that's the basic uh, training school. It's still a good, you know, still a good school but they're not training at the exact requirements that flight training schools uh, or the universities train to. And so if, let's say you went to a part 91 flight school and then you went to Purdue, you may have to take some classes over or some certificates over because it was a part 91 and, and everything like that. So if you're gonna find a flight school, make sure it's a part 141 flight school. Um, and you, know, you may be able, to, if, if you wanted to go to buy your own airplane route, you may be able to do that and go to that 141 school and say, hey, I have my own airplane and they're like, okay, well, yeah, you'll just have to pay for the flight instructor and that's it. So you don't have to rent the airplane. Yeah. You're still paying for the gas, but so basically you're only paying for the gas and paying for uh, the flight instructor. So that saves you a bit of money. That's what I would recommend. And especially right now, if you have the opportunity to fly right now, do it, do it. I have so many uh, buddies of mine that started flying when they were 13, 14. Um, they would actually be able to solo do their first solo before they could even drive a car. You know, they're, you know, they're flying airplanes before they're driving cars and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, if you have the opportunity to do it, it is a lot cheaper if you do it now and transfer your credits in uh, than doing it at the flight school. I'll give you a little example. I'm still paying off student loans from Embry Riddle. Um, and I've been out of school since, oh, man, when did I graduate? Oh, seven. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, you know, I'm making a good amount of money now as a captain. So I'm able to pay them off really quick, but uh, it's it's a lot of money. So cheaper way that you can do it, I highly recommend it. So yeah, if you if you if you can start flying now, I recommend it. And then you said through that ABA program, I could still go to college during while well, I'm also enrolled in that. Yep, absolutely. In fact, they they help you find the college that would work best for you. The nice thing about the ABA program is they pay for your private pilot's license. So that's what I think twenty twenty five thousand dollars right there. You don't have to pay. So if you get accepted into that, it, it's basically like a scholarship. You're getting twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars worth of training for free. So that's also a big benefit. It's just, it's an amazing career. I'm really glad that that uh, you wanted to, to talk to me about all of this. But like I said, shoot me an email if you have any other questions and, and things like that. I'm there for you. So got you. Thank you very much. Absolutely, anytime. Yes, Captain Ben Wilson. Thank you so much for joining us on the call today and teaching us uh, a little bit about what it takes to become a pilot. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.